Okay, what is Torah? What is Torah? Let us write it up here. Let's begin right over here. Um, Torah. Okay, Torah. Torah. Or you can put the T here. Uh, w here, the R here, and the H here. And as you can see, let's get the pointer. Let's get the pointer so one can see it. This is a T. This is a cursive style. This is the W. This is the R. This is the H. T W R H. T W R H or Ta W R H. Tawaraha Tora. Tawara, Tawa, Tawara, Torah. So therefore it's written T O R A H Torah. Torah. Now the other Jews, the other uh Jews, the converts to Judaism, who are popularly known as the Jews, they define Torah as meaning the let's write it right over here, the instruction. Okay, the instruction. They say that Torah is the instruction. They also say that Torah means law. So let's write law under here. Law. Law. So Torah, law, Torah is instruction. Torah. Torah. Now, in Ethiopia and Ethiopic, Torah is the, let's write it on this side. It is the O V T or Ori. Here we go right here. It is the O R I T or You could take a little bit of this off, a little bit of this. Right there. Orit. The Orit. Now, what does Orit mean? That is a very, very interesting very interesting question. What does Ori mean? Since Ori is said to be the Ethiopian Masoretic Law and Pentateuch, and it's very much similar to Torah. If we take the T off, we have Ora. So we see that the O is similar, the R is similar, the I, the I sound being, you know, derivative of the vowelization, Nuka of the re, resh, the re is the r sound right here. And then we have in the Hebrew, Masoretic Hebrew, we have an h ending of it, which could be considered a male in a sense, the h ending right there, while the t in the Semitic languages is usually the feminine. So this would probably be a more correct, though this could be reference, referential to uh, another ancient Hebraic root, all right? Now, orit comes from the word, let's skip the word right here, ar, ya, ar, ya, araya, ar, aya, ar, ar, aya, araya, araya. Now, Araya, if we look into the dictionary, let's get the dictionary right here. And hopefully, if you're joining us for these studies, you have this particular dictionary. You can take a look at this dictionary right here. This is the um, Concise Amharic Dictionary, the Wolf Leslaw Concise Amharic Dictionary. Now, hold on for a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, when we look into this particular dictionary here, there's others, but this is probably one of the readily available ones that you can get a copy for your own studies. We have on page 127, we have Araya, 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 or Araya. Example, meaning example, model, embodiment, Arayano. Arayano. 
to exemplify, to exemplify something, arayano. Then we have arayanet yallo, exemplary. Then it says, underneath here, it says, see also, pointing us to a possible root, it says, see also, rai, rai, and tariyit, 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 tariyit. Now, rai means vision, as in the vision of God, the vision. When you see vision in the English, in the King James, it's referring to that Rai and the book of Revelation, the Ethiopic book of Revelation, is called Ye Johannes Rai. But let's continue to probe the meaning of this because this is very important. This is still part of basic, you could call it initiation, it, getting started. You understand how do we start? What, what are the significant things we need to learn first? Uh, the, 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 the first steps, the basic foundation has to be upon Torah, upon the instruction, the law, the orit, from the ar -aya, which according to the definition here means example, a model, embodiment. An example, a model, an embodiment of what or of who? Now, let's just go to the is for a moment. The is Now, in the is we have... Um, we have a word here that's interesting, um, areya, 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 yer, 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 means to be level, to be smooth, to be equal, to make equal, level, to share equally. Then we have areya. A areya or a areya, a areya, a areya, a areya, because the different A sounds have a different, in ancient times had a different um, vocalization. But we'll touch on that as we get into some of the higher schools. Um, but as a basic, it's basically ar ay areya to make equal to. Then we have te areya, te areya, te areya, which is the past participle of that which has been made equal. And here we get closest to Torah from the Gittas. We get closest to the true ancient root of Torah, the Ethiopic root of Torah in meaning and in name. Then we have uh, erui to uh, equal the same eruye, equally to the same extent, and this is in the Gutters, and we have eriyina, eriyina, or eriyina, which means equality in the Gutters. So the meaning that's closest to what we are studying right here for both Torah, so we can see how Torah comes out of the ancient Ethiopic and the ancient Gutters, Ar which means to exemplify an example, a perfect embodiment, but from the root of making something smooth, making something level, in other words, making something correct in that sense. So the Torah is our example. The Torah or the Orit, Ethiopically the Orit, Orit. Now Torah is the past participle we learn from studying the Gutters, of Orit. It tells us this right here in this copy that we have of Gutters. I think this Thomas Lambden's um, book on Gutters. Um, kind of an old book here, but we'll also touch on that as well. But the Amharic from Concise Amharic Dictionary already gave us a working, a working definition when it told us that Araya is the and meaning means example, a model, or embodiment. Now, when you add the te, the te, as in the Hebrew, you add the te or the tau. And the ancient tau is interesting because we look at the ancient tau, which means a mark. The ancient tau, which is the T, the T in the Amharic, and the good is like this, like a cross. In ancient times, it was either like this with a circle or like an X with a circle in the Hebrew. Tawah. 
Tawe. Ta we or some would say Tawi. And there could be a link to ancient of course there's a link to ancient um Egypt in in um Tawi. Tawi, which was also a marker for land a marker for land or territory, this particular glyph type symbol. But in the ancient Hebrew, this was the T. Now we have modern Hebrew that, um, or Masoretic Hebrew, that has the a symbol similar to this, a glyph or a symbol similar to this for the Te. And what we wrote right there was the script, the more of a less the script form of the Hebrew. So, if we add this cross, the T sound or the Tawe sound, the Tawi or Tawe sound, to Orit or Ora or Rit, we have the past participle of something that has already been exemplified, something that already has been um, made as a model, something that has already been embodied or become exemplary. So this is the root right here. The Ethiopic root of Torah is very easy to disclose from studying the root of Orit, the Amharic and the Ethiopic or the Gutas word for Masoretic law or the Pentateuch is Orit. And then we get to the root of Orit, we have the Ethiopic ar -aya. And ar -aya or ar -aya means a example, an embodiment, um, a model, in the sense of a model, a perfect example. And they said the root of this is vision. The root is a see also a rai, a rai. So we can find a possible root in the vision. Now this all will begin to make sense as we put all this together, but we have to define the words and the terms that we are using first and foremostly. We have to get a good definition and a contextuality of what we are speaking of. So when we talk about Torah or the Orit, the Orit is the example, the model, the embodiment based on the vision, based on the vision of the true God, the God of the Hebrews, or Yahweh Eloheinu. So we, we're going to take this down right here, and we'll move forward from, from this. This is just to get to the root of Torah. What is the root of Torah from the Ethiopic, from the Gutas, from the Ethiopic root? And also pay attention to the Old Hebrew, the Old Hebrew symbology for the, for the T, which is a little different than the modern Hebrew, but we can see that the Ethiopic is consistent with the general shape and intent where it looks like a cross or an X sort of a symbol. The circle, as we mentioned, was added in the old, in the archaic and the old Hebrew, as well as this symbol was used in ancient Egypt as a land marker to mark off land, a particular land. One more thing before we move on from this is the ending. This has an H as we touched on it briefly. And this has a T. In the Semitic or Shemitic, more correctly, Shemitic languages, they say Semitic, we say Shemitic. Anyway, in the Semitic and Shemitic languages, the Asiatic, the Afro-Asiatic languages, the ending is important, too, because it gives us a certain, um, for some words, gender to it. With the H ending right here, if it had an A ending, after the H, that would feminize it, usually, in the uh, Biblical Hebrew and the Shemitic, the ancient Shemitic languages. But the H itself would basically keep it as a more a male um, gender. Some could say neuter or neutral, but when we look at the T now, that's added to some words. And if you study Hebrew, you'll understand that, um, that all... Ethiopic is you will understand it as well, but some of the older biblical and Hebrew languages and even Arabic and the is the older languages keep the male and female distinction very much front and center. The T, the T, 
because of the energetic, not just roles of male and female, not sexism, but the energy levels, the electromagnetic levels, the, the, the energetic level, because it takes the two, the male and the female, to create, and these two are also in creation. The T would be a feminizing, would make this word, in a sense, a feminine, give it a feminine sense. And this is interesting because the so-called uh, Falashas or the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, they have an interesting um, form of Judaism, a, a more original and a truer form of Judaism, in which the Senbet or the Sabbath is considered a woman who intercedes on behalf of God's chosen people for the people of God. A woman or like is likened to a woman, and this is very clear when you study the scriptures. Israel is likened to a woman as well. Um, and we as a bride of Christ, as a collective church, the house of the faith, are also likened to a woman. So we have to get to the root to understand and not get confused in, in um, this uh, post-traumatic slavery sexism that's going on nowadays where most people do not understand the beginnings or the roots. So the instruction is important, the law is important, orit is the root of it coming from araya, and the latter form now of this, the original form, araya, araya, to orit, and then we get the Masoretic Torah, Torah, which the nowadays Jews say it's the law or it's the instruction. While we know the root of orit comes from that perfect example or model of the vision, of the vision of God and Christ, or the vision of Yahweh and the Moshe. So we're going to pick up on more of this and touch on the second part of this. So take this down, and we'll take a pause for the cause.